The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. I got a fever, and the only prescription is more over the line. This, I'm sorry, Smokey, you were over the line. That's a problem. Is the cigar authority? Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? The authority. Is that a serious question? On everything cigar. No, it wasn't. Yeah. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. And out of the cigar industry. Sounds pretty awesome. With your host. You have to use so many cuss words. David Garofalo. Whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if they would, I do not do that thing. Mr. Jonathan. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. Barry Stein. I have a scotch on the rocks. Any scotch will do, as long as it's not a blend, of course. Uh, a single malt. Glenlivet, Glenfiddich, perhaps. Maybe a Glengow. Any Glen. It's time to light them up. Sounds really fun. It's time. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool. For the Cigar Authority. I gotta have more cowbell. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Sound Set. Today, it's episode 417 as we begin our ninth year on the Cigar Authority. To help celebrate with us, this milestone all the way from the Republic of Honduras. The owner and winner of the 2017 Cigar of the Year Aladino is Justo Aroa in the worldwide launch of the Aladino Maduro. Welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority, broadcasting now over eight years, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog on the CigarAuthority.com. And the first time on the show, and we had you scheduled a couple of times. First time on any show. Well, no, I, I did. I did uh, via Skype. I did. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, a cigar coupe. But, oh, okay. So, but uh, this is actually my first time actually on a, a real wow. stage. So this is this is pretty cool. And, <laughs> and on a real show. And on a real show. Oh, oh no, that's no, not no, nice. No, you know, he, coupe. Not, he doesn't mean it. No, you're right. We love coupe. He, he's, he's a very good gentleman. He is he's a, a good he dude. Is. He's a good yeah. guy. Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> so those he's are, a New Yorker. I'm a New Yorker. He expects. <laughs> that's yeah. it. He's expected. So, um, yeah, we're in front of a live audience, and uh, you're a little nervous. But don't be nervous because we just goof off here. That's, what, uh, that, that's part of our charm, I guess, is uh, goofing around. But the Cigar of the Year, Aladino, this is a family business you did with your father. And Cigar of the Year, we name it. And, uh, but today, something special is a new cigar that you're coming out for the IPCPR trade show. But launching it here today, uh, thank you for that. Thank you. This is a big deal for us. Is the Aladino Maduro? So tell us about this cigar. Well, uh, as you know, as 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 a long tradition of manufacturers, you know, we have a, a, a repertoire of tobacco product that we have come out in in in, in our previous in, yeah. our, in our previous. That many so, years. so this allows us to you know come out with with stuff that has already existed in the market for many years. For yeah. Us. So like fifty years, right? Yeah. I mean, so we you know, and, and I would say outside of Cuba and Central America, my dad is probably the oldest grower that was actually taken by the Oliva family by Angel Oliva, which is the you know probably one of the most visionary uh, leaf brokers in the industry. Yeah. That you know, and, and it's a family very dear to us. Even my my middle name is named after Angel Oliva's brother, Martin Oliva. Wow. Uh, which is John Oliva's uncle. So yeah. it's, 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 it's a, believe it or not, the family, the, the family history in the cigar business, they're all very connected. Inc- very connected. Yeah. Your godfather. Uh, well, my godfather was Justo Rodriguez, which was the buyer. So that's why I got Justo, because okay. he was the buyer for Corral Wadisca. So Jonathan calls you Gusto. That's, yeah. you'll be happy oh, to know. Gusto. You'll be happy to know one of the members yeah. on our panel, and, and Dave shall remain nameless. No, We've right. been working on the pronunciation of your name for about three months now. But but you know what? It, 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 it goes back and forth, and at the end of the day, it ends up with a T.O. So I, I kind of understand it. <laughs> so this cigar is the Aladino that we know and love, which is a Corojo cigar, but the wrapper on it is. A Maduro from Mexico. Yes, from Mexico. It, 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 it's, it's a, a Torren um, uh, uh, San Andres. We've been doing business for them for many, many years. And, uh, you know, they, they do it right. And, we, you know, one of the things that we try to do always in our cigars, 
uh, as a grower, we appreciate good quality tobacco, and, and you need to get the best of the best to get the, the consumer's best product. You have, you know, it's like having, you know, a, 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 a steak. If you have, you know, really tenderloin or, or, or good meat beef, at the end of the day, you have a very juicy and great steak, and that's the same way in a cigar. You know, having great tobacco will end up with a great uh, stick. So, like you said, the San Andres wrapper gives it that, you know, that complexity that, that combines with the Corojo binder and Corojo uh, filler, which is only Biso and Seco. We, my dad is a blender that likes a lot of flavor, but not overwhelming strength. So, you know, because eight out of 10 cigar smokers are mild to medium. Yeah. But at the same time, it gives you that an, an enough flavor that if a medium to full, uh, you know, a uh, smoker could also enjoy it, you know, very nicely. Man, for a guy who was nervous to come on and talk, that's the longest first answer I've ever heard <laughs> yeah, in my well, life. That's it. Yeah. It's better, <laughs> that was great. It's better than the yes or no answers we were expecting. Now, one so. thing you said to me before the show started was one of the ways you can tell if something is, uh, and maybe uh, tell me if I have it wrong, uh, really a San Andreas Maduro is the toothiness. If this was a Habano Maduro and Almost some people sandpaper. try to pass it off as San Andreas that really isn't, but this has a little tooth to it. If you pull down the, the yes, wrapper, absolutely. you can feel the bumps. Whereas if it was Habano Maduro, it would have a smoother feel. Absolutely, absolutely. Less it, tooth, as they say in the yeah. industry. And when you burn it, you can see the little bumps on the ash. And I'm assuming that's from the toothiness and then, the magnesium in the wrapper. He just For wants me to you do to that, say he has then a nice I'm not. He wants me to put on my glasses so when I start smoking <laughs> it. Yeah. Well, let's give it a cut. I'm dying to smoke All right. this. It's, it's a box press cigar. Now is that three gonna... to four sizes a box press? The yeah. fourth side is a traditional round cigar. Yeah, which is the Lancero. Is is um, is that going to affect the taste of the cigar? Do you think? Well, I since there is there is a combustion element that when you when you squeeze down and then also at the same time when you do a a a, uh, a, a box press cigar, you also roll it a little bit looser, maybe a little bit less yeah. tobacco, so that when you press it, you still have that ability to have a, a, a nice, clean draw. So it's important. So it, it, it's, it's rolled a little bit looser. Did when you, you try do it both ways? I have tried it both ways, and there is, a t I don't know if it's psychological, but there is a difference. There is Stop a difference. asking him questions, because he's just going to keep talking, and well, we're not going to get a cut. Well, that's for our listeners anyway. It's time to cut our cigar. <laughs> the official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Okay, let's give it a taste before we even light it. I'm apricot stealing this directly from, from Husto. There is a... Apricot sweetness. There's an, there's an herbal quality on the back end to the taste. Very like slightly. A, like, an herbal, um, like an herbal tea, a high, high-end herbal tea, maybe an Earl Grey. See, I'm getting apricots. Yeah, you're wrong. Very good. We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Intimidator. And I picked this one because uh, Justo admitted to being a little intimidated coming on the show. Yeah. So I wanted to push it a little bit. Thank you. Uh, this is a four-jet lighter that has a color-changing flame. It does have the patented Vertigo big-ass tank and easy adjustment at the bottom. And the Vertigo Intimidator retails for $24.99. Unbelievable. This could be a table lighter. It's not. Barry likes to keep it in his pocket. It so impresses the ladies. Yeah. <laughs> He's also I, happy I to see you. I keep it slightly bent yeah. so it's curved for their pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> You're it's good also, like that. It's also ribbed. <laughs> yeah. There is a ribbed quality to it. All right, this <laughs> so uh, we're, all of us are smoking different sizes. So uh, Dave being the big kahuna that he is, is smoking the biggest one. He's smoking the Toro, which no, manages. I'm not. No, I have the, the Robusto. Oh, my apology. So you're so smoking the Robusto, which is five by fifty. It retails for ten sixty nine or one eighty eight ninety nine a box. I, being the big kahuna that I am, am smoking the Toro, which measures six by fifty and it's eleven sixty nine or single or two oh six ninety nine a box. So that that is the larger size. That is the larger size. Okay. Uh, our astute producer is smoking the Elegante, which is a 7x38 Lancero. Not it a surprise there. It's $7.69 or $134.99. And I'm smoking the Cazador, which is a Corona Gorda that measures 6x47, and it retails for $9.69 or $179.99 a box. And since they're not available anywhere else right now, 
please visit twoguyscigars.com. That's the only place you're going to get it. That's the only place you're going to get it. So, and Husto could pick any size that he wanted. We picked ours first, Mm -hmm. and then he picked the same size that I picked. Suck up. So I got it right. (laughs) (laughs) I got it right, because I've smoked every size. What's missing here on the regular Aladino is the big ring gauge cigar of this. Yes, and and I think... uh, you know, for us going, actually for my dad, which is kind of the, the, the one behind the Aladino brand, uh, you know, going, you know, above, you know, to the 60 gauge, we, we did on the regular yeah. uh, Corojo line, is, is, it, was, it was a stretch. It's not, you know, it's very traditional. And I think the Aladino line is trying to bring back, uh, you know, the classic Cuban sizes, sizes the yeah. original, you know, old school. And, 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 and he's really sticking our guns. And that's one of the things that we're, it's the forte of this, of this brand, trying to, you know, bring back the traditional smokers. Yeah. Right. You know, smaller gauges, great flavor, you know, uh, have that, that ability to, to show off the manufacturing skills of, 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 of the guys yeah. that work at the factory. Who so in, in the FDA original release, wasn't there a Rothschild size? Uh, do you have any plans for that? Well, you know... Like I said, we, we do, did have the Rothschild, and, and that's one of the things that my dad uh, came out with a, with, with a, with a spit box. And, 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 and you know, he, he's a lover of the Rothschild. He's, that's one of his favorite sizes. And, and what uh, are we looking at for size there? Maybe a, a 48? It's a 48 by four and a half. Okay. It's a 40, and, 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 but I, I wanted to keep it simple because the best selling sizes in the industry are the Robusto Toro. Yeah. And, and, and then in, in our case, the Aladino. Uh, Elegante, the Lancero, the 38 by 7. I was it's, it's, shocked. It's, it's, it's doing that. extremely well. So, yeah, I mean, and, and that's it's great to hear because, you know, people have a very accessible price point and people are able to, to try the Lancero and, it, and it's, it's a stick that gives you great flavor. It is the best priced Lancero and the best priced of your line. Yes. A lot of people end up making the Lancero a high priced and I was shocked to end up hearing uh, that it's doing so well because typically they don't do so well, but it's the way into the brand anyway, the lowest price. You want to try something, try the Lancero, I guess. And, and you get a boost of flavor on that Lancero. I'm, which, which I do with this, <laughs> by I the way. I six of those Lanceros yesterday. I'm, uh, I'm picking up. Have you guys ever had the, it's kind of a limited edition fluff. It's the pink one, the raspberry. Of course. Of course you have. <laughs> so if you, if you dusted it with a little cinnamon and you toasted it up just to a golden brown, that's what I'm picking up on the initial light of my Toro size. A little burnt of the marshmallow, strawberry Maduro. marshmallow fluff. Raspberry. Yeah. So I so have. Don't give it to me, Ed Sullivan. No, because no. you're wrong. But <laughs> what I'm getting is a meaty component, meaty spiced. Um, let's take the, the prime rib roast, the outside of the prime rib roast that is – um, has all the spices and everything on it. Ed so Sullivan's only going to agree with you because he's smoking the size, the Lancero size, which is what I got this morning was that meaty component. Because I said it because I've been chain smoking these for two days too. Get in my belly! With, with the fat that's melted inside of it and the saltiness. I'm getting hungry. Spice. <laughs> Pusto, do you, when you guys are sitting at the factory and you're going over blends, do you come up with the, the flavors like this or... Are you just looking to make sure that the Corojo meshes well with the San Andreas and that you have your proportions correct? Uh, you, know, the, you know, the flavor description that you guys give uh, completely, I don't think we were talking offline. And, yeah. and, and I mean, it, they're completely different than, than, than what we do. Most of all, what we're looking at is if the, if the tobacco is ready to be blended. If, 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 you know, if all the ammonium content is out, if all the aging is there, and then how does a binder affect the wrapper, which the wrapper is the one that gives the most flavor, and then how are you going to blend in your, your, your filler. So that's, that's what we're always looking at, especially from the farm side, because as, uh, as, uh, as, a, as a tobacco grower, you want to make sure that when the tobacco goes ready for, for, for the factory, it's gone through all the processes, you know, the leaf selection, and, you know, goes through the, through the aging, and then, you know, you get that right mixture and blend a cigar that almost everyone can smoke, and you allow them to be able to have one cigar, which I think my dad is a genius, was able to get that cigar to, for anybody that could smoke it. Mm. You, either you're a light smoker or you're a full body smoker. Now, my buddy Fowl's in the audience, and he is not into strong cigars. 
and or is he not into he's not into Maduro's also? And when he came in today, I said, "Give this cigar a try." And I was interested to see what he ended up thinking. I came upstairs to say, "What do you think of the cigar?" He says, "Wow, I'm really enjoying the cigar. I'm surprised because he's typically a lighter cigar smoker. So I'm urging you, the lighter cigar smoker, to give this a cigar a try because it looks like it's a strong cigar. It's a not a strong cigar, but it has so much flavor to it. Right. So don't be scared looking at." The don't be afraid of the dark. Don't be afraid of the dark. Absolutely. But it's like also Husto alluded to earlier. There's enough going on that a person like myself or Ed Sullivan that likes medium to full, we're still highly satisfied by this cigar. It's not mild by any means. Yeah. But it's not overpowering. Well, that could also be thin. the intimidator in your pocket. It could go either way. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, you are relatively new to the cigar business. When did J.R.E. Cigar start? Well, Jerry, actually, uh, having the full line, uh, you know, my, my brother uh, did a, a previous launch, I think, in 2015 yeah. in, in the trade show. And then I followed up in that trade show in, in, in uh, 2016. So you weren't there? Uh, no, I was in, tw- in the 2015. I was not. But in the 2016, okay. we were there in the, in, in the booth uh, with Christian. And, uh, and, and you know, it, it, so it, it I forgot the question. <laughs> did you relatively? Oh no 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 no. Yes yes. Yeah. So, actually, we did we did, like I say we did have the initial launch, but one of the things that my dad always said, you know, until you have everything ready, we're not going to launch. You know, we did have a, a launch of everything, but he was FDA reasons. No no no. Yeah. Not 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 FDA reason. He wanted to have the right wrapper, the right combination. It had nothing to do with with okay. with, with FDA, because when Christian uh, went out on t- on, on twenty fifteen. All the Aladino, Tarascan, and Rancho Luna lines were selling. So everything was there. Okay. And then, like I always said, it's the same tobacco product we've been producing, just with different brand names that we own until 2008. So right. it's, it's, it's the same tobacco product. Yeah. So you were in, uh, born in Honduras? Yes, I was actually born in Honduras, but grew up in the States, in the U.S., in and in a lot of boarding schools, and, um, and uh, actually finished up high school in Canada. Okay, and then got into a whole bunch of different businesses. As, yes. As Christian yeah. jumped into the family business and went with Camacho and did everything there, you were. I, I was. I was. I was also when we were doing it in the business. I was always. I had the part where I had rental equipment or farming, so I did a lot of farming. I did a lot of sorghum, and I did this for Cargill. Cargill, as you know, is a big uh, feed uh, production, and they're into you know uh, growing. Uh, uh, egg production and, 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 and poultry. And uh, we had big contracts to supply them with, with, with uh, sorghum. And, uh, and I had I'd always worked with my dad in the fields, providing all the, all the agro- agronomics to the, to the field and also preparing all the land and all the, all the pest management uh, of the tobacco. Yeah. And then also we grew sorghum with, with after we grew the tobacco. So I was always constantly there, but I also started a water bottling business with, with, with my wife. And that went really well, became probably the second or third bottler in the country, and, and, and it was very successful. So it was, it was so. And it was actually add the water into the tobacco fields with drip irrigation? Yeah, it, drip irrigation actually started. Uh, we had one of the biggest uh, tomato paste and, and ketchup producers. Uh, they did a pilot program with us back in the 90s and for, did drip irrigation in, in the Valley of Hammerstrand, one of the, in the farms that we had. And he started that. I said, hey, Dad, this is the way to go. I mean, this is, this is high-tech technology. This is what we need, and this is the next step. And, 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 but it requires a lot of resources to do that right. And, you know, we've been doing that for a while, and we also have teamed up with Bayer Crop Sciences. Right. Which I think is, 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 is having the best practices of what you need to use so at the end of the day the consumer gets a great quality product, but at the same time, you know, managing the environment in the best way possible so you have good quality products. So what are you talking about for area of, of um, growing? How much tobacco fields are there? Well, the, the farm is, is, is close to 700 acres, and, and we have uh, almost, I would probably say maybe like 15 or 30 acres short of 400 acres in drip irrigation. Wow. So uh, we have uh, uh, over 50 tobacco barns, uh, 13 are... are, are or the American Connecticut style with short hoohis. Yeah. And then we have uh, f- uh, uh, 40 Cubans. So, so we have a huge infrastructure for drying tobacco because there is actually a, a, a direct relationship 
of how much area you grow in tobacco and the amount of tobacco that you need to hang up and dry. You know, you can't say I have I grow a thousand acres and got ten tobacco barns. You don't do that. Yeah. You usually require more or less between six and eight acres to full a, a fill a tobacco barn. And then in the tobacco barn, you're going to be there uh, between uh, thirty to forty-five days, depending on the priming. Higher primings require a little bit more drying in the tobacco barn. Yeah. So that all that tobacco, I got to imagine you can't use all that tobacco. You must be selling tobacco. Well, um, it, now it, one of the things that we're looking at, uh, as my dad, because remember we uh, we were selling a lot of tobacco before, and we were consuming a lot of tobacco before, and we had to buy a lot of tobacco in the in in in, in the previous life in the Camacho days yeah. because you know the volume was there. Now, since, you know, my dad had to go through a non-compete, uh, you know, the farm is there. We have great age tobacco because we, we st were, and, still and grow. We still grow. And, you know, we are opening up our, our, our facilities to, to, to establish, uh, you know, a new clientele for our leaf. And it's going to be, you know, very selective guys are going to be able to get our leaf. And, uh, and, and, and except, huh? except, except the Corojo wrapper. You keep it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we accept the growth. Yeah. <laughs> so that's interesting. And and that so those that are had Aladino, you love Aladino. There is a difference here with Aladino Maduro and Aladino Corojo. Uh, it's the same exact cigar except the wrapper has changed. And it makes it a whole different cigar. So it, it kind of backs off that Corojo taste that, that it, what I'm getting, what I'm missing, let me say on it because I love the Corojo taste of it. This becomes a whole different cigar. Great cigar, but it's a different cigar altogether with one leaf difference. Yes, one leaf difference. And also, you can see, for example, the Aurora 20 and the Aurora, the, what my brother also has, he also has the Corojo leaf. Basically, just us as a, as a family group have access to that leaf that we produce there. So, you know, as a, as a matter of fact, the Aurora 20 has been such a success uh, yeah. because, you know, my dad, you know, also worked with my brother blending that and, and you know, they're you know, they're both great blenders. Absolutely. Do so you do any of the blending yourself? I'm starting to get more involved in the blending, and 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 and, and, and actually, I in the new stuff that we're working on, I'm getting a lot there because, you know, as as I my palate gets more developed, I'm, I'm trying to see trends that I like, and not, you know, and we're growing also Havano and our Criollo La Victoria. We call it, call it because of my grandmother, my dad, dad's mom. And, and yeah, I mean, those combinations, you know, you'll see in our other lines, which is Rancho Luna and Tadascan, are just phenomenal. And do you, do you, are you somebody that pretty much sticks to your cigars that you guys make, or do you smoke when you're out on tour, uh, different stuff from, from I the do, shops? I am, I am starting to smoke some other stuff, and there's, there's, there's great cigars out there today in the industry. And I always say that everybody that comes out with a cigar has got to come out with good product. Yeah. So, you know, if you want a, bland, a brand to take legs, it's got to have something. So every, every brand's got something special. And, uh, and, 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 and I got to say, there's fantastic products out there. There is. More uh, than ever. Yeah, more than ever. And, but, you know, we distinguish ourselves by having a unique leaf. And that unique leaf allows us to, to actually... Uh, have that perfect niche for that consumer that is craving that real Corojo leaf. And yeah. we talked off the air about uh, how important it is for you to say authentic Corojo yes. because you guys are the only ones with this leaf. It's it's authentic. It's the real yes, deal. Yes, yes. I mean, there, we, my dad's given the leaf to several other people to grow, but it, 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 is, it is so delicate to, to, to grow. You know, it, it requires so much care. The yields are 40% less than anything else. It is so susceptible, especially now with the climate changes that we're having. You know, it is getting more cold and rainy, and, and, and then that really destroys the crops. So that's, that's what happened back in the 90s that, you know, wiped out all the Cuban crops. Yeah. And then the, 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 the crossbreeds of, of the, the original authentic Corojo with Habano and other, uh, and other, and other strains of tobacco, they developed the 98s and the other different Corojo. Yeah. They call Corojo varieties, which they are, but then the taste intensity of that, f of that leaf completely changes. So yeah. it really is a labor of love because if you're only getting 40%, if you're getting 40% less yield, yes. the average farmer would say, well, I'm just going to put a different leaf in there and I'm going to get my yield up into the full 100% that I can get out of, a, out of a crop. But so as a labor of love, your dad loves this leaf. He loves this flavor. He loves his taste. And he just continues to farm it. 
Yeah, and that's that's basically uh, you know the consistency of of, of, of the Aurora tradition that this leaf has been so special to us that you know took took the family to the next level and you know y you need to respect that and you need to love that and, and it takes sacrifice so that's why you know you know but at the same time as a grower we try to give the best value for quality leaf that we have so you know you'll see or, you know some people say oh you know the, the pricing is a little wacky but you know we're selling Corojo leaf so but but you know that's that's how we kind of figured it out yeah your pricing as farmers you know what the cost the raw cost of tobacco yeah. was because you're farmers so it does seem a little different i tell you that the um, lancero is actually underpriced uh comparatively as right. you see out there but that's people that buy tobacco because of what the value of the tobacco they that uh, they i would have. think that it would be a more expensive proposition to make a lancero because now you've got a specialty roller You've got to have somebody that is skilled in that size specifically to be yeah. able to get it to draw, to be able to have the Lajero placed properly and have it not have burn issues, which you and I both smoked this morning, that yeah. Lancero. It burned perfectly all the way through. The draw was oh, they, very listen, they good. Know, they, they know what they're doing, doing. They've been doing it forever. Not only great um, cigar, tobacco, leaf growers, but the people that have worked in your factory that roll the cigars are the people that roll the cigars before, right? Yeah, and then uh, uh, we have... We, you know, we're going now to generations. We have the grandkids, uh, you know, rolling right. cigars. And, and, and then also the style that my dad uses, you know, everything that you have to do, you got to actually roll the cigar like an accordion because that way the air flows through the filler. And that's very important. And every single cigar is draw tested. So that's that's something that is, is very important to have consistency and quality. Every cigar. Every single cigar goes through a draw machine. So how that's, how that's new is that? That's good for us as a retailer because oh, we course. can stand behind that product 100% yeah. that the draw is going to be good. Nothing worse than getting a cigar, tight draw. You, you bought a cigar, you're on the golf course, it doesn't draw. It's not going to happen with any JRE tobacco. Yeah, and, you know, some mistakes. One could go through and, you know, it's a handmade product yeah. and there is human error and, and, every, and everything that you do. But, you know, we really put a high emphasis. You know, we don't want to be a... a, a 12, 15 million cigar company anymore. You know, the, the, the amount of, uh, I guess, regulations and, 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 and that, you need to be a, a medium-sized manufacturer but have great quality product. And, yeah, you know, you and that's what you need to do. You know, there is a niche for everybody, and we want to get that niche of, you know, high-valued customer at the same time, give them a high-valued product and a good, consistent product all the time. Yep. So now your brother Christian, without getting you in trouble or without getting me in trouble or anything, what, what's up with him that he's off on his own? And Tell us that he was a bedwetter until the age of nine. You know, give no. us the real what's, scoop. What's the problem? No, there's, there's absolutely no problem at all. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you need to understand, you know, my dad had a longer non-compete. Um, and then um, Christian, you know, he is, he's a genius when it comes to, uh, to marketing. He, he took the, the, the Camacho... Uh, brand to the next level sure did and uh, I admire him a lot. I mean, you know, we are extremely close I mean, uh, he's the godfather of my oldest daughter. I mean, I'm the godfather of his older son uh, We were together last Sunday. Good. I mean, I mean we get family uh, uh, we always Christmas Thanksgiving uh, Weekends we always share as a matter of fact uh, my nephew my second nephew JJ uh, is, you know, goes and practices basketball right across the street from my house, and I go watch him practice. So, you know, the, our relationship is extremely close. But uh, I, I, as, as the business concept that Christian developed since he started way ahead with, with Asylum has been a great success, yeah. CLE and Aurora, uh, you know, if, if we were to fall under that, that, that structure that he has, we were going to be, you know, just one of them. No, no, not one. It would have been a lack of focus. Yeah. Okay. And then if you look at the way most companies are, if you look at, you know, in a car manufacturer, you look at General Motors, you got a Cadillac line, you got your General Motors, uh, your GMC, and you got your Chevrolet, and, you know, you think they're different companies, but they're all owned by the same company. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's a matter of focus. And, and, and like I said, we have fantastic relationship. Uh, you know, I respect. He's got a great team working for him, and and and, and my hat's off to him. He is. He Not is. one piece of dirt. You got nothing. No, 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 no. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> well, no. Well, I'll tell you, he was uh, tickled pink when the cigar of the year was announced, and it was Aladino. Uh, the first thing I got was a text from him. 
uh, very happy. So that was nice to see um, that, um, you know, he, you are his older brother? Yes, I'm older his brother. older brother, yes, yes. And uh, he did very well in the cigar business. And he's a guy, you know, a lot of people that got out of the cigar business have got back in. And he's somebody, uh, and, and without success, he's one that I would bet on that he is oh, going to be successful. And, you know, for a young company like him, he's already, you know, hitting he's some very, very, he's, he's very solid. Yeah. And like I said, he is, uh, he's a go-getter. And he's a good brother, so you yeah, know good. there's there's no there's no animosity. And a lot of people, I right. go to stores and we're like, hey, why are you guys? It's, it's just it just makes us diff, you know business sense. You need to focus, uh, you know. And, and and like I said, we all share that same Corojo wrapper that you know is right. only exclusive for us. Right. And you know he's get you know he's, we all get the pick. So you know all right. it's, it, we're all together. All right. And speaking of family, your wife's involved. Yes, my wife's involved. Uh, uh, my actually, uh, my older daughter is the one that's handling our our Instagram account, and okay. you know she's a uh, uh, she's got a lot in common with your daughter. Right. I, I just emailed you her food blog, so you yes. could, so you could uh, send that to your daughter. Right. And uh, um, hopefully, you know, she needs to work, you know, outside of the business for a while, learn, you know, a little bit of discipline, you know, understand working for somebody else and responsibility and maybe you know hopefully you know jerry is going to keep on growing and i'll be able to if there's a job available for her she can apply for it oh, <laughs> wow okay i like it that's like awesome it. yeah so tell us the lines of jre tobacco so we have the aladino that cigar of the year you guys all know we talked about it so many times now the aladino maduro which was a natural but there's other lines here yes we actually do have uh uh two more lines and um uh, we have the Rancho Luna, uh, the, which I did a little bit of a makeover. Uh, you know, uh, Rancho Luna is, 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 comes in Habano, uh, also comes in a Maduro wrapper. Uh, and they have a different composition because the filler is, uh, they have Habano filler and they have a Corojo, uh, and a Corojo binder. So it's, 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 it, they also have Habano and, and Corojo filler. So there is a combination of, of toning down the intensity of the flavor profile of the Corojo when you go into that. And, and also Rancho Luna has been out there in, in, uh, in, in Connecticut wrapper when, we fir when my brother first launched it. And, and I, I think that's a line that we need to uh, continue to, to develop as, as a Rancho Luna, yeah. Connecticut. And there's a, a, a more value price. It, yes, yeah. it, it will be ranging, you know, our, our Robusto 7 and then our, 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 our Toro 750. And, and we have a Gordo at nine so we keep it at three simple sizes but two two different wrappers and and, and the third wrapper that you know we need to continue to, to to come out with it uh which we did in the past and then we have the tatascan line uh which is you know uh one of the one of the predecessors of, of what we did before with other tobacco products uh which had that little sweet cap and yeah. you know th that we have five sizes and uh you know starting from a corona up to a Gordo from 450 up to eight bucks. So it's also a valued cigar. Yeah. So today, you know, with all the cost structure and all the S chip and, you know, with the business partner that we have, which is, you know, FDA and, <laughs> and Uncle Sam, yeah. you know, they make more profit than the retailer and they we do. do. They do. <laughs> and I love just sitting in the sidelines and, you know, collecting a check. But that's, you know, they're, they're fantastic manufacturing cigars, great yeah. quality of product. And I think it's, and then within the Tata Scanline, we also have a bundle line. Which uh, you know they'll range from uh, I think it's from three dollars to about four four fifty on on retail. So there's something for everybody already. There's a, something a, for everybody out for there. For a small uh, couple of year old company, everything's going good. Yeah, we're actually uh, doing great numbers. I mean, uh, and the great support that we have from two guys. I mean, getting the award for us was very 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 humbling, and at the same time very. It's been a great success because, you know, it's gotten the, the name out well, there. We're and very deserving for sure. So if we're, we have uh, retailers that listen to the show along with, with, uh, with the consumers that are out there, but if a retailer is looking to start carrying a line, how can they get a hold of you? Well, we have our, our, our GRE website, and okay. also we have our info, which is info at GREtobacco.com, and we'll contact them. And if they send us an email, we'll contact yeah. them, and we have reps 
All right. Around, so somebody will come the visit them. And, they'll come and, and visit them. And, and you're crazy if you're not doing it. You miss, you're missing the boat here because you, you got a, uh, a young company with people that know what they're doing. They, they're a young company, a couple of years old, but they've been in the business for 50 years. Right? Yes, just different different yeah. names. Right, that's all. <laughs> there, there. So there's a little uh, wink and a nod there. And one of the things, uh, we're all very supportive right now. We're off of the big internet guys. We want to build the brick and mortar business. We, we like to partner up with them and, you know, work with them and, and help them develop. Remember, coming from the beverage business of mass consumption, my biggest clients, 80% of my business was in the brick and mortar. Yeah. So I understand mass consumption, and, yeah. and, and I also understand how uh, the Internet business has impacted the, the retailer. Yeah. And, 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 you know. We need help. We need help. And, yeah. and, and, and the, you know, we're, we want to be close to the retailer. Okay. So you're welcome to stay with us if you want, and we'll leave that up to, we'll see if the commercial, if he ends up staying on. No but pressure. he's welcome to stay on. But uh, thank you for everything, and thank you for being on. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, the winter weather is finally breaking, although it snowed yesterday. And uh, we have lots of cigar events to talk about. What's next for the Cigar Authority on the podcast? Our ninth year, we're in. We're live from Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. This is David Garofalo, and you've heard me say it over and over again for many years. Please support your local cigar retailer, and I mean it. If you don't buy from them, they will go away, and then what? There'll be no place to go. That being said... Sometimes you're far away from any cigar shops or a place that doesn't carry the stuff you've been hearing about and you want to try it. That's where TwoGuysCigars.com comes in. It's the number TwoGuysCigars.com. And unlike most online cigar shops, at TwoGuysCigars.com, you can buy a single cigar of whatever you want. You don't have to buy boxes or even five packs and suffer through cigars you might not even like. One of this and one of that is acceptable, appreciated, and commonplace at twoguyscigars.com. That's the number, twoguyscigars.com. Thank you for your business. Ooh, we're going to have fun. When the Cigar Authority returns on the United Podcast Network. There was a time when cigars were the hallmark of elegance and success. In this time gone by, the aficionado would revel in opening a beautiful box, only to find their favorite celebratory smoke emblazoned with a heritage-laden band. It's time to put the bundle down and travel back to this golden age. For your voyage, may we humbly suggest the only cigar worthy of being packaged in a handmade marble box. Berlin Wall Series from Hammer & Sickle. Live well. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm -hmm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up the diamond crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. 
You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes, four sizes, including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy, the Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. If some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palmer, has produced the cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing part. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. Hi, this is Tony Serino. And this is Carson Serino. From Serino Cigars, you are listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we are back live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Sound Stage, right above Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. It is the Cigar Authority now in our ninth year. You can find us, the Cigar Authority, on social media. Please be our friend. Subscribe to us. Give us a nice five-star review. Chip in here. Help us out. Welcome back, everybody, we could to use the Cigar it. Authority. We could use it. So uh, we got lots of events and stuff coming out. I want to... Uh, Briefly go through uh, each and every one of them coming up because they are all selling out. So it's like now or never on all these events. April 25th, which is next Wednesday, the Argonosa Experience. This is with Terrence Riley from Casa Fernandez, uh, the makers of Guardian of the Farm, and the uh, JFR Lunatic. Um, you're going to come to this event for $10. You're going to receive three cigars. One cigar is going to be all one type of tobacco. The second cigar is going to be a different type of tobacco. And the third cigar will be those two tobaccos blended together. And it'll explain them as it goes through. It's a blending seminar. It teaches you what ends up happening with that tobacco. Only 30 tickets can be sold. This will sell out probably today. Uh, it's only $10 per person. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, give us a call. Uh, 603-898-2221. And uh, sign up for that before it's too late. So that's about ready to wrap up. Um, on April 19th, uh, we invite you to come by Two Guys Smoke Shops, all three stores, as we are inviting George Padron to visit the stores. And uh, he doesn't come around very often. So if you want to come by Thursday, April 19th, he'll be at the Two Guys Smoke Shop in the Seabrook location from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., just a few hours there. Later on, coming to the Salem location where we are now from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And the following day, Friday, he'll be at the Nashua location from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's Thursday and Friday, April 19th and April 20th. On the Thursday night... The 19th. The 19th. Uh, he'll be in Salem from 6 to 8 o'clock. 
at 8 o'clock, we actually close the store down, and, we, and I'm letting you know right now this is going to be your first and last chance of knowing this is going to happen. If you're interested, after hours, we're going to stick around with uh, George Padron and have a little private get together with him. Just 30 people, it can't be more than that because that's all the cigars we have to have this special party like it's 1999 event that we're gonna have with him. We are going after hours with him and we're just gonna sit down, maybe we'll put a little snacks out or something, but everybody gets one cigar. And the cost of this event is $100 for this one cigar because that's the cost of the cigar itself. It's the Padron Millennium Cigar. So here is an rolled in 1999. Rolled in 1999, and uh, you're talking about a 19-year-old cigar, $100 value cigar. If you can get it, we have it. We have 30 of them, so 30 of us, and that includes us, are going to be with him, and we're just going to light it up, and he's going to talk to us, and just very informal get together, and he'll uh, talk with us a couple of hours with George Padron alone. It's a hundred dollars, only 30 spots available. I would say that now I'm men mentioning this, this is going to sell out today. So if you're interested, come by Two Guys Smoke Shop, eat, uh, any location, let them know, uh, pay for your ticket, and lock yourself in, or give us a call, 603-898-2221, and do it over the phone. But this is your first and last chance um, for that after hours event. Moving along, we have uh, Happy Hours with Rocky Patel, and this is at Castaways in Seabrook, New Hampshire, and this is going to be Wednesday, June 6th. We got a lot of tickets for this. We're going to go up to about 200 people on this if you're interested. Three different Rocky Patel cigars with Rocky Patel himself. Castaways, a cool place in Seabrook along the water, beautiful views. We're going to have live music. Rocky will be there. Special guest appearance by Wilson, the basketball. The uh, from volleyball, volleyball. Volleyball. From... Uh, from Castaways the movie, I right? Can't, I can't believe you got Wilson well, signed up for this. We did. We got him. He'll be there. I, do you know his agent or something? I, I do. I know the, I know the people. Um, the menu looks pretty sensational for that. Bang Bang Shrimp, Crab Stuffed Mushrooms, Chicken Tenders, Crab Cake, Caesar Salad, Baked Stuffed Filet, Steak Jasmine, and lots more. There's only Take two it. things on the menu Dave will eat, but he's going to eat That's a lot right. of both of them. That's right. Uh, tickets are $100 for that. Uh, I say there's a lot of tickets, 200 but this is a uh, pretty awesome night. Yeah. So you may want to jump on that right away uh, before that sells out. That's available. The Father and Son Cigar Dinner I talked about last week, Under the Stars, um, that will be at the Tuscan Kitchen here in Salem, New Hampshire. It's June 16th. Uh, father and Son from Hammer and Sickle, Eric Hansen and Pop Sickle will be here. Uh, <laughs> Three hammer and sickle cigars. Gets you every time. Every time. It does. Um, $99 for the father and son or father and daughter pair. That event will sell out today. There's only a handful of tickets left. You won't hear this again because it will definitely sell out today. This is the end of it. If My daughter still talks about it. She's in Australia. Yep. She reached out to me this morning on a quick call before she goes to bed because she's on the opposite uh, time schedule as us, the other side of the world. But uh, she mentioned it this morning and said, I wish I was going to be home. So we could go to that. Well, she better hurry because those yeah, tickets will sell out. It's going to be more than $100 for me to get her from Australia to it here will. and back. It will. But it'll be worth it. Uh, and the last one we're going to let you know about. We haven't talked about this yet, but I'm going to give it all up today. Um, Two Guys Smoke Shop's 33rd anniversary tickets will go on sale May 5th. I have all the details here. We're ready to go. We're giving away a Smokey and the Bandit Trans Am, 1978 Trans Am Black with the T-tops and the eagle on the front. It's pretty damn cool. It's in yeah, my it garage. Is. It's awesome. Um, that event is going to take place September 12, 2018 at 6 p.m. at the Burroughs Function Hall in Haverhill, Mass. You're going to need to get your tickets on May 5th. On May 5th, because May 6th, there will not be tickets left. Right. So there's only 400 tickets to this. It literally sells out in hours. It's the same people. They get whole tables if you want a whole table of it. Uh, it's a table of 10. It's not his seven, save me a table. Nope, his 10, uh, because everything fills up so quick. It's three stores doing it at the same time. So you stop by Two Guys Smoke Shop on May 5th. 
and that's when you get your tickets. Um, special guests, uh, cigar celebrities that will be appearing will be George Padron from Padron Cigars, Rocky Patel from Rocky Patel Cigars, Nelson Alfonso from Bandolero Cigars, Nick Perdomo from Perdomo Cigars, Eric Hansen from Hammer and Sickle Cigars, Tony Gomez from La Flor Dominicana Cigars, Glenn Case from Christoph, Christian Aroa from CLE, Steve Saka from Sober Mesa, Hochi Blanco from La Galera, Jose Dominguez from Jose Dominguez Cigars, Johan Swan from Davidoff, Tony and Carson Serino from Serino Cigars, Nick Melillo from the Wise Man Cigars, Eric Newman from Diamond Crown Cigars, Gusto Aroa from Aladino Cigars. Who? Justo Aroa from Aladino Cigars, and Scott Weeks <laughs> from Recluse Cigars. That's 17 different manufacturers. That means 17 different cigars that you're going to get. Uh, Five-course sit-down dinner, 17 premium cigars, over 400 prizes. Everybody wins a prize, and only one person wins the Trans Am. Uh, only one ticket will win the 78 Smoking the Bandit Trans Am. Meet and greet all the cigar celebrities. Mix and mingle. Sit down, dinner. Trans Am turned 40 this year. That That's one. right. Uh, advanced tickets, $225. I say advanced tickets because it will sell out in one day. May 5th tickets are $225 a ticket. Reserve tables at 10 only. You got the information. There it is. Do it with the, will you will. We have an unbelievable busy day on May 6th. May 6th is the day that we talk to people and we tell them we have no tickets left. And there's hundreds and hundreds of people that do it. They come the next day, and it's too late, or even the 7th. So the 6th is a Saturday. Uh, is, a, is a Saturday, yeah, the, uh, the 5th. The 6th is lots of phone calls. And then Monday it explodes with more people calling up and everybody's angry. The heads up, May 5th. That's the day. That's the day. It's an important day. It's going to be on the posters and everything that you're going to see out there. That May 5th, well, the event isn't until September. May 5th, it sells out. Get the tickets on May 5th. You've been warned. So that's that. Cinco de Mayo, easy to remember. That's right. That ding ding means it's time for the matchup of the week brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair, Victor Sinclair Cigars. Who would win this hypothetical battle? Mr. Jonathan. Would you rather never be able to speak again or always have to say everything that is on your mind? Whew. I'm pretty damn close to already saying everything that's on my mind. So and I'm never going... Never speaking again, I can't fathom. Yeah, I have to... Uh, I don't really have a lot of secrets, so I'm going with everything that's on my mind. Since you posed this question, beginning Mr. Jonathan, yeah. I'm going to vote that he never says anything ever again. <laughs> you wish that he never says anything <laughs> yeah. again. But I think it's, everybody's going to say what's on their mind, right? Unless you're a shy Wouldn't person. Wouldn't the world be a better place if no. we all just said it? Do you ever see the movie? There's a movie out there that the guy just can't That's a say fictional it. thing. In yeah. real life, <laughs> if we all just got used to saying and you know you're going to say it, as a salesperson? It's called Tourette's, isn't it? Yeah. As a salesperson, it'd be very tough. Say whatever's on your mind, right? Tough. Burn a lot of accounts, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Couldn't be a salesperson. No, you could because Ed Sullivan does it when someone asks <laughs> him about uh, a certain cigar that's, uh, let's say, $1.50 per cigar, so you know what, which one it is. And uh, someone says, is that a good cigar? And he says, it's appropriately priced. <laughs> so you could find a way to say everything that's on your mind without saying anything bad, I think. Yeah, I'm going to say whatever's on my mind. I'm, in fact, looking forward to getting to an age where I can do that, and it's socially acceptable. Absolutely. I'm Was that forward. next year? I'm looking forward yeah. to being old and get away with saying some stuff to the lady. Oh, he's such a cute old man. You're right. You can. <laughs> yeah, right now I'm at that creeper age. I <laughs> can't say it. I predict you'll be at the creeper age for a while, buddy. <laughs> yes. And you, you're talking to people that are broadcasting. We obviously like to talk and hear ourselves. So, I've, I've said an awful lot of things that got me in trouble on the show. Again, I, I already do it, I think. Yeah, I guess we have no choice but to say... We'll say what's on our mind. We do. I, I do it, too. We I do, do it all the time. Yeah. I get in trouble for it all the all time. All the time. All the time. Just look at earlier in the show with Cigar Coop. <laughs> all right. Let's take a peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. They're coming to take me away. Ha-ha. They're coming to take me away. Ho-ho. Hee-hee. Ha-ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats. And they're coming to take me away. 
it's time for news from the insane asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true, or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars, take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80 Asylum Cigars. Safe sex is something we've told our teens about and have asked them to practice. Recently, teens have taken the condoms, but not how you think. In the latest internet craze, teens have been taking an unrolled condom, snorting them up their nose until it comes out of their mouth. It seems like the kids are following in the footsteps of their parents who did not know how to use a condom correctly either, and that's not only insane, it's asylum. <laughs> They're Whoa. coming to take me away, ha-ha, they're coming to take me away, ho-ho, hee-hee, ha-ha, to the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time, and I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats, and they're coming to take me away, ha-ha! <laughs> he, works, he works from the punchline backwards. I, I'm learning this about Barry Stein. He, 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 oh, I got a good punchline for that, and then he gets the story for yeah. it. Dave sent me a great story. I just couldn't come up with a punchline. Yes, yeah, so we're not doing it. You're gonna have There's to a good story for that. It was a great story. Yeah, but There's I got no, no punchline. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it beats eating the pods, right? The well, barely. Trojan's coming out with Tide flavored condoms. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I remember, like, way back, like the the kids in college or something would eat a goldfish or something, right? That was a a thing. Yeah. But. You know, eating tied uh, pods and uh, snorting, condoms, snorting condoms. The worm at the bottom of a bottle of tequila? Yeah. Who hasn't done that? I have not, I have done, not that. done that. Yeah. I, first of all, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy a tequila that has a worm in it to start. That's the best that's tequila. The best yeah. I think that's probably the lowest end one. Speaking of alcohol, can I share the show I'm going to be on on April 25th? Sure. I'm going to be on uh, Sharing Our Pairings. Uh, They've had you back a few different times because he takes it very seriously, the alcohol consumption. If you ever very listen to that. Very seriously. He, yes, he's, he's wasted. <laughs> he's and, wasted uh, before the show starts sometimes. We're going to be smoking the Atabay Spiritus. Oh, wow. Or Spiritus. And do you think they're going to give you crap about that BS 100 rating you gave well, it? Well, John Reiner, who's now John McTavish or something like that, changed his last Ch name. He changed his name before you. Yes. yes, he did. He's coming out of retirement just so he could smoke the cigar. Mm. Oh, my. Nice. Yeah. He's running cigar shops up in Canada. Correct. Yeah. A lot of cigar shops. Multiples. Yeah. And that ends up taking up your time, and then you can't do the podcast and things like that. I anymore. have no idea what that's about. No. <laughs> no, not at all. All right, what do we got for time here? We don't have any time. Let's go to break. What do you think of the Aladino Maduro before we do that? If you got, uh, you know those honey-baked hams? If you kind of baked it a little bit on high and you get that crispy outer coating, dust it with a little brown sugar and cinnamon, and you have the Toro size of the Aladino Maduro. So you know where I was going with this, where I was thinking, because I was trying to get ready for this. If you would uh, get smoky bacon with the salt and the bacon and remove the, bacon. the pork okay. <laughs> <laughs> out of it. <laughs> Skip Martin that, appreciates what right, you just said. Now take the bacon out of it. Yes. Like that smoky, salty, like I said on the outside of the beef or something, you're getting a l little bit well, of it, but... How about a turkey bacon? That's pretty neutral. You get all the flavors and not much with the turkey. Yeah. I don't no, know. Did I, don't have I ever had that? I, maybe I have. I'll make you a dish this week that has turkey bacon in it. We'll have ourselves a turkey bacon party. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know if we'll I, have a BLT. I don't know if I care for it. I don't know if I care for it because Ed Sullivan will have a BLT. Yeah. No. He won't have mayonnaise and he won't have the tomatoes. tomatoes and so I won't he'll have, have bacon. He'll have turkey bacon Toast. lettuce. <laughs> and I'm not big big into lettuce, to be honest with you. <laughs> Just give him a couple of pieces of bread. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a turkey sandwich, a hot turkey sandwich. No, it's got to be the bacon. We're going turkey bacon. Yeah. We'll work something out. You know, I, I was thinking, Jonathan, you should do not a whole turkey, but a breast of turkey someday and have nice sliced turkey, maybe Thanksgiving sort of thing. Let's do a Thanksgiving dinner. Thanksgiving Mondays? Sure. <laughs> or Thanksgiving Thursday would fit better, I think. Plus, right, we have cool. a longer. We can have two lunches. That's we have good. double lunch on Thursday because it goes. We, we're here till eight o'clock, but right now we're here on, only for another hour. So let's go to break, and when we come back, we're gonna light up what? We're gonna light up a special Aladino that is not available for consumption for people to buy. You can only get it from him at events. I like that. 
and the wrapper is totally different. It's not the Maduro, it's not the Corojo, it's something totally different. We're going to get to that when we get back. Lots of cigar events I told you about. Uh, we're going to have even more. We're live from the cigar, from Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning at Aging Room Cigars, as Rafael Nodal has traveled to Spain, where the idea for Aging Room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solera, Rafael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales, where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera, it will have you calling for an encore. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soils of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available online at twoguyscigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of cigar science basics. This is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's CigarJournal.com. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th anniversary as the decade on steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tabacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. 
blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. The Dominican-grown Corojo binder and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full-bodied, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at better cigar shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father, Julio Eiroa, are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa Tobacco Farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old-school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop to shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. This yep. is the Cigar Authority. That's right. The authority. We can't have anyone freak out out there, okay? On everything cigar. Got too far. In. There's too much to lose. And out of the cigar industry. Keep our composure. With your host. Come on, Diablo. David Garofalo. On the count of three, name your favorite dinosaur. Don't even think about it. Just name it. Ready? One. Two, three. Velociraptor. Mr. Jonathan. You know what? I respect women. I love women. I respect them so much that I completely stay away from them. Barry Stone. What an incredible Cinderella story. This unknown comes out of nowhere. A former greenskeeper now about to become the Masters champion. It's time to light them up. Favorite non-pornographic magazine to masturbate to. It's time. Good housekeeping. For the Cigar Authority. Can we just become best friends? Yep. And we are back with our number two, broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Sound Set. What's up in the cigar world and what's coming on the Cigar Authority and another great cigar. Welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority, broadcasting over eight years, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast, awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine, awarded the Top Ten Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row, the Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest, the Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog on thecigarauthority.com. There we go. What are we having for coffee here? This is a pour over? This is a pour over and it is the Anna Mercedes Honduran. Since we're smoking Honduran out of respect, cigars. Out of respect, we're having a Honduran coffee right now. Honduran, a real Honduran in the audience. That's good. Legal Honduran. Not like these 1,200 that tried to cross the border the other day. Can you keep the politics out of the show? Okay. All right. So here is exciting cigar right here. And I like it the most because it says not for sale. You actually can't get these, which makes them all the much special. You can't get them. And people like what they can't have. You need three for you guys. He's keeping and, the other two for three himself. for Dave and one, two, three for us. <laughs> yeah. So this is, do you have information on this, Barry? Yep, we are smoking the Aladino event only Churchill, which features a Cameroon wrapper, a Habano binder, and the fillers consist of Habano and authentic Corojo. Okay, and what's special about this is the blend itself, the Cameroon wrapper grown in Honduras. Mm. It's, it's not from Cameroon, Africa, but they actually got the seeds from Cameroon and grew it. And the size, there is no Churchill. Correct. So, and it feels a little thick for a Churchill. Like it feels like it might be a 52 ring gauge. I don't know. Uh, I don't see him out there. So, so 51.25. 52 ring gauge? Just 50. 7 by 50. 48. 48. Wow. Huh. It feels a little bit bigger. They make wow. them bigger in Honduras. <laughs> That's 
That's right. They're compensating. So here's what I'll say about Cameron Rapper. Very thin, very delicate. Yes. This is not to, the one to throw on the golf course and uh, very sheeny. Around. It's got a, it's got a, a smoothness it to it. Not toothy at all. The opposite. When you rub it. Yep. Typically a sweet tasting wrapper. Mm -hmm. uh, let's give it a cut and light. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand while all other brands were raising prices. Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. So we'll give a cut and we'll taste it before we do it because this is a totally different blend. Peanut shells. Yeah. Cold draw 100% peanut shells. Berry Thank you. I'll be here all week. Don't forget to ship, uh, chip tip Sean, your barista. There we go. <laughs> I can see it. There's when a you, musty. You bite into the shell yes. to, get to, the, to get into the air because everybody knows what it tastes. Oh, I never ate peanut shells before. Yeah, you had them in your mouth. You crunch on it to pop it open, right? Yes. I do anyway. You're uh, yeah, to. these are nuts I'm comfortable with in my mouth. On yeah. like the nuts Jonathan prefers. Walnuts. <laughs> <sighs> We're gonna light our cigar today with the <laughs> Vertigo Intimidator. I like that Barry gets a kick out of himself so much. <laughs> <laughs> the Vertigo Intimidator features four jets, a color-changing flame, and the patented Vertigo big ass tank. It also has an easy adjustment at the bottom, and it retails for twenty-four ninety-nine. That is the Vertigo. Intimidator. Are all these other lighter companies going out of business because these guys got it all? I'm going to say yeah. Yeah. I usually tell my jokes in front of a mirror so there's two people laughing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, is that what you call them? <laughs> jokes? He enjoys it so much. Making fun of you. It's low-hanging fruit. Yeah. I enjoyed it for three years. You have allowed me to get away with making fun of Jonathan. Beautiful white ash, very different than the other ashes too. It's got a, it's Wonderful got a little sweetness, sweetness yep. at the start, but also kind of balanced out with a. There's a, a a nice little bitter component, like like bitters. When you add bitters to a drink, it kind of rounds it out a bit. I bet you that's gonna go away because typically Honduran tobacco, right? right it has that beginning. bite at the beginning. But it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, not overly sweet maple syrup. So this would be this would be a puro. It's all Honduran. Everything's yeah, grown in Honduras. Yeah, puro from Honduras. Yeah, but all different tobaccos, all blended. But it is Honduran puro. He's he's off camera. He's off the show. He's happy. <laughs> the headache has gone away. He's getting more relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing happening here. It's crazy. But this is. No, this, because you... This show, so you understand how this show even came about. This is what happens every day. It's the same thing. We're usually standing up. Right. And we get to sit down. We had a whole Cigar Authority show at 8.30 this morning when Dave and I got here. Yeah. And by some ourselves. sometimes when there's good stuff, I go, save it, save it. Be you know, it's... And then it's we can gone. use that because it, it can't come back. It's, even though nobody else heard it, it's like we can't bring that, that moment back in time. Right. We're strange to Very interesting. So typically you have a Puro, you have a, a cigar with tobacco all grown from one country. They're, it, it, they lack complexity. But I think that they've got something going on here, and, and he spoke a little bit about their drip irrigation. Mm. I'd be willing to bet that they're also changing the soil itself to match up to the seed strain that they're growing in uh, so that you end up with the correct flavor components because – you can grow seeds in three different places, and you're going to have three different flavors, right? And different seeds. And you could have three different seeds and, and kind of generate and different flavors. And then you flavors. can take different primings from those plants. Right. But this, this really speaks to the mastery of um, Julio Aroa in his ability to be able to take all Honduran tobacco and make it have uh, a more complex flavor. Very interesting. There's a lot going on. Yeah, very, very interesting. Something I've never had before. So the only way to get this is to actually meet uh, Mr. Aroa at an event, and you buy a box of cigars, and this is one of the little gifts they give you along with it. And what a gift. What a gift. Yeah. It's awesome. We've got to find out if they'll make boxes of these for us. For me. Yeah. So I can have them. Yeah. And I, want, I would like them in a Corona. 
Really? Not that I'm pushing you or anything. Look what Ed Sullivan has done to you. No, because it, it, it makes all the sense in the world. I smoke a lot of cigars during the day. So I can't physically smoke eight of these. But I can smoke eight Coronas. So I can have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It, it's, it's the poo-poo platter method of cigar smoking. Mm, but I understand that completely. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, don't you find the Coronas are stronger? I mean, yes, you smoke obviously, eight of those. It, the nicotine content. No, I don't. I don't the find that they're stronger, Ed yeah, Sullivan. Nicotine <laughs> content's higher on a thinner cigar. Oh, well, I obviously. should have asked him that while he was up here, but I'm saving that all for my show, my solo show. I'm not even going to invite Barry on that show. Cool, right. a day off. So one of the cigars we had for the care package actually got bumped because we have... Mr. Right, it was Rowley originally going to be uh, Guardians of the Farm this week. That'll be bumped back to next week. Right. So uh, this, this one obviously not part of the care package, but the care package is open for you if you want to be part of the care package for this limited time that's going on. I'm looking through my notes here. Uh, a lot of different listeners have requested sample packs of the cigars that we smoke on the shows, and we have done that. We put together a four-pack of four cigars that will be smoked. It's just bothering me. That's okay. all. Okay. Four cigars that will be smoked during the month, and uh, you get four cigars shipped to you uh, each month, and it's nineteen ninety nine per month. We automatically hit your card when uh, you sign up. At the end of every month, we hit the card ongoing, and you'll get the four cigars shipped to you, and later in the month, we'll... Uh, smoke those cigars during the show. If you're interested in doing that, go to thecigarauthority.com on the right-hand side. You see the care package. Click it. Yep. Sign up to it. And at the end of the month, you're going to be charged immediately, but at the end of the month, we'll ship it out. At the end of every month, we'll hit it and send it out right away. And if you're looking at thecigarauthority.com on a mobile device, that graphic to click will be near the bottom of the page. Yeah, so now, this is interesting. Down. I'm looking at the box Hurry here up. that this comes in. Ed Sullivan, if you could... Uh, Get my camera going. So this is the box. And then on the back of the box is a barcode. Ah. So what, here's my theory. And I'm not going to put Husto on the spot here, but here's my theory. They originally were going to sell it, realized how friggin' good it is, and said, you know what? We can use this As a tool to that sell it is. the rest of the cigars. As a tool that it is. Because this is, this is phenomenal. This is phenomenal. Can I nominate this for Cigar of the Year next year? No, you cannot because it's a limited release that you can't get on a regular basis. Uh, but listen. It's early in the year, but I think the Maduro could possibly be a contender. The Maduro not, could. Not mention it for a few more months, but I think early. It's a it would not be something because that has never happened before. Back-to-back -back winners from the same company, but it's possible. Um, but th this particular one, and it, it doesn't have a name to it. It's an Aladino, but it's not whatever it is, whatever you call it. It's the Churchill, so there's only one Churchill. Right. So the Aladino Churchill, if you want it, when you see wherever you are living and, the, and you have Husto is coming to the store in an event, you want to go. You want to go, and, and this cigar is great, and you want to go and you want to buy a box and do the right thing and support your brick and mortar, but I will tell you this, he plays kind of, not the fool, but he plays like he doesn't really, oh, I'm just learning this. This is a man who you can uh. tell by talking to him his verbiage, he is deeply ingrained in tobacco oh. culture. Oh. He has forgotten more than many, in quotes, master blenders right. actually know. Right. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Um, what else? Um, the uh, cowbell. How did the cowbell go? Um, the care package response blew us out of the water. Okay, it didn't blow me out of water because we're giving it away. Right. <laughs> we're, we're, we're still afloat with the cowbell. All right, we still got we still got a lot of cowbells. So it's a nice cowbell. You put it on your cow. It says the Cigar Authority on it. All you got to do is just go to twoguyscigars.com, and you're buying something anyway. Just yeah, in you're the gonna comment order, section. You're going to order the Aladino Maduro this weekend because twoguyscigars.com is the only one that has, has it. it. So put just, cowbell. Just put cowbell, and we'll add a cowbell. Add a cowbell, cowbell because I bought a lot of them for the second time. <laughs> You'll hear the mailman coming down the block. Right, right. And oh, the mailman's going to say, I don't know what's in here, but. <laughs> hey, 
Jonathan, right. if someone puts that on the cow and they lose their cow, do we guarantee postage for that cow, or that's, that's only on the key tags. That's only on the key fob, I think. Okay. Because the, the address is on there. But anyway, uh, you want a cowbell. Everybody wants it. And what I'd like to see is pictures of you smoking cigars. Well, the with very the cowbell. Last week we ended up with a video right on the on the cigar authority of a gentleman, uh, and I'm drawing a blank on his name. Uh, his daughter had the cowbell, and she's ringing oh, okay. the cowbell. You know, Very I cute. didn't see it. I and I, I it. wish I could remember his name. I meant to give him a shout-out. I just didn't leave myself a note. Ah, that's what we're looking for. So anyway, let's find out what's up in the cigar world with Barry Stein. It's time for What's, what's up? up in the Cigar World, brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is... The Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every Recluse cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled N2 bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse cigar today. And on August 10th, 2018... Warning labels are scheduled to start appearing on cigar boxes, taking up 30% of the space. This week, IPCPR, CAA, CRA, and Texas retailers have asked the delay for a delay before they spend millions of dollars to implement it, arguing that as the FDA reevaluates premium cigars, it might be an unnecessary expense for family-owned operations. Huge expense. And in New York City, the confusing tax law to see cigars taxed at 28.5% will remain intact as the state removed a provision in the new budget that would have raised cigar taxes in the state to 75%. And in a relatively quiet week, that's what's up in the cigar world. What's up in the cigar world was brought to you by Recluse Cigars. The Recluse Amadeus Habano Reserva uses grade A Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, a San Andreas binder, a Dominican Lajero Seco, and Pennsylvanian Broadly filler tobaccos, which create a blend we call the Cigar of the Year. Recluse Cigars is What's Up! And the gentleman you were thinking of was Alex Hilliard. There we go. I knew it was somebody that had written in a lot of times. Uh, you know, have you ever had Honey Graham cereal? Yes. All right, so you... Bless. Honey Graham cereal with just a little bit of lemon zest on it. Just a little. Not bad, Ed Sullivan. It's not bad. Just a little lemon Come zest. Come on. You got to admit do, it. Do you think I should give it to him? I think he deserves it. Uh, Doesn't that feel good? It does. <laughs> not bad. I got, I, I got graham crackers for sure. Honey graham crackers. I'm a graham cracker fan. I like a graham cracker. Yeah, you put peanut butter on it? Is there any other way? All right. None of that chunky crap either. I like the smooth. Yeah, uh, you know what the best is? You take two graham crackers, a little whipped cream, put them in the freezer, and you make a diet-friendly ice cream sandwich. Ah. Uh, oh. I've had it. Yes, you have. I have yeah. had it. You, you brought whipped, it into me. Yep. Whipped, whipped cream, cream whipped is cream. not diet-friendly. It is very low in calories. You're thinking of Cool Whip. Yes. Cool Whip. Cool Whip. Why do you say it that way? You know, it's <laughs> low in calories, yes. but it's also one molecule away from plastic, so I don't eat that. As an alternative, you take the graham crackers and you crush them up and you make a crust and then put a key lime pie on nice. top of it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that works. You With a little bit of Cool Whip on top. top. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you ever have butter on a Pop-Tart? Yes, I have. So freaking <laughs> have you ever put butter on a Pop-Tart? It's so freaking good. Have you ever put butter on a Pop-Tart? If you haven't, then I think you should. One of my favorites. And this stupid drop was brought to you by our Honduran Coffee of the Week. What a nice cigar this is. Mm. Taking nothing away from the other cigar we had, but yep. this is show-off time. We got it, you don't. I'm smart. Well, and I think this is, <laughs> this is, uh, is show-off time for the blender for um, Julio Aroa. So upcoming shows next week, we're going to be uh, talking about the Mount Rushmore of cigars and cigar makers. Great cigars. The makers versus the marketers. Ah. So Julio Aroa versus Christian Aroa. Great cigar maker versus great cigar marketer. Interesting. Along with lots of people. So think that way, and let's get a little conversation going next week on for next week's show. Uh, the following week, Cuban brands versus the U.S. counterparts. We did this once before. Yep. We'll get a little into that. And we got lots of uh, uh, cigar celebrities interested in coming up. We, we had um, 
Rafael Nadell come up this week because he thought we were past the winter thing. Spring is here. I'm going to finally come up. His son's up here working the thing. He come up and started snowing out. It was freezing cold. And he said, see you later. I'm gone. I'm she left early. It's too early to come up, but it's starting to come up. So manufacturers are starting to lay, lay down, and they're interested in coming. So I've left the house yeah. without a jacket a couple of times. It's yeah. been okay. Next weekend, it'll be in the 60s. Spring, here we come. Yeah. I put the, the, the shovels away, the winter coat away. It was way too soon. I didn't realize it wasn't over. It's, it's, it's April. It's New England. Yeah. It's, it's April, but... Um, we're gearing up. So these things could be moving around a little bit like we did with the care packs. We had to move something because we had somebody here and we're going to stay with his cigar. But we'll move stuff around a little bit. But uh, that's uh, some of the upcoming shows. But we got lots of people uh, planned on coming up. So uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned for it. Right now it's time for the Don Raphael Offer of the Day. Brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. Everyone has a price. Would you do this? And if so, for how much? $500 to wear a mud mask made of animal feces. Do I get to pick the animal? On your face and leaving it on till it dries. By the way, your skin will look amazing after, but $500. Do I get to pick the animal? Does it matter? It matters to me. What, you're going to end up picking your dog? Does it Does it matter with the animal? Can I pick? Can yes pick. or no? You can pick. All right, I'm doing it. Really? $500, I'm in. And the two animals that I would I would have to do a little research on <laughs> would be uh, like a cow or a bat. Bat? Are, I think, are, 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 are like the two smelliest poops out I there? Th no, I think a bat poop doesn't smell that bad because they eat it. So I think a bat poop would be okay. Wait, wow. And Guano's, I don't mind the smell. Guano's supposedly one of the worst smelling menorahs out there. I don't think so. But, Jonathan, is I might be willing to pay for this. Is it monkeys or something? What animal eats the coffee beans? In the There's a monkey one that does that. That's, I um, mean, that Ethiopian, might be a good right? choice. Uh, what is that? Uh, Jamaican Blue Mountain? Where yeah. the monkey eats they it? They climb up the, the mountain to pick the bean and eat it. I don't know about monkey. That's too close to human. That's, that's, that's weird to me. But <laughs> really? <laughs> perhaps a cow. <laughs> and the <laughs> Or, or a bat. So what we get out of this is Jonathan would lick a urinal. Yeah. And he would have poop all over his face. And he won't eat a Twinkie. So <laughs> toilet fetish? Uh, uh, I don't know. I dabble in the golden arts, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> the golden arts. Really? <laughs> and that came really quick, too. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I think he's been there. Just saying. You, you want to look at my browser history? <laughs> is that what you're asking? No one wants in my browser history? No. You want to swap browser histories? <laughs> Definitely not. Would you do right. it, Barry? No. Ed Sullivan. You don't need to ask. I don't even need to ask, you and I wouldn't do it, and you would consider doing it. And I'd have to do a little research on, on you know, the benefits for the skin. Would you rub a, a funny bone on your face? Probably for not. $500, I would. Yeah. Okay. $500 and then let it dry? Yeah. Yeah, I could do that. Really? Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so what are we getting for some early taste here besides graham crackers here on the Aladino that nobody else has? That's that's we a, can't we can't be wrong because nobody else is smoking it along with us. You can you I'm come never up with wrong it. anyways. Really? So I was having a conversation with Husto before the show, and he said that you know he he's a little envious of people that can pull the food flavors out of the cigar. And he's I don't talk, know if envious was the word, but okay. I, I'm, <laughs> well, no one heard the conversation, so yeah. I'm going with it anyways, and he's not up here to uh, say it Dave, wasn't. Dave, I was there. I'd go with incredulous. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so he, I said, well, you do the same thing that we do. You are tasting the cigar, the tobacco to see if it's ready, so you're eliminating flavors, really, and getting yeah, rid of the ammonia gone, and yeah. saying, all right, this is what it's going to taste like, and it's going to taste good with this, and that's all we're doing. We, we just have the benefit of doing it with the finished product for enjoyment. He, uh, he has to do it for work all the time. He smokes so much unready stuff so that we can enjoy this. That's right. And that's how we are in retail stores. we got to smoke the crap so you don't. So you see? mentioned the lemon zest earlier. I did. And... You're right. I hate Thank to you. admit it. Yeah. But it's like you get that little bit of lemon and you rub some on the rim when you're going to have some espresso before dropping it into the espresso. Nice. And you get that lemon taste. You rim your cup before uh -huh. you drink the espresso? <laughs> he's, rim he's rimmed. Yes. Yes, I do. He's rimmed. <laughs> I'd like to try that. Sean, I'd like a rimmed, a lemon rimmed espresso shot when you get a chance. 
but you nailed yeah, it. Yeah, I gotta try. I gotta try this. Graham crackers, a little lemon zest. You got any graham crackers back there? It's very different than the than the other ones. Very different. All right, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, Aladino, natural or Maduro? Which one do you prefer? We're live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass-looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice its sweet-like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range, that's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars, there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except a name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars in the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Andullo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Andullo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. It's time to light that cigar and stay tuned. Ooh. The Cigar Authority will be right back on the United Podcast Network. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake. Jose Dominguez, not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donuts. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. 
This is Eric Newman from the J.C. Newman Cigar Company, and you're listening to the Cigar Authority. And we are back, broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Sound Set. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. We're smoking the Aladino Churchill, the Cameroon version. You can only get it at special events, a uh, special event going on right now. What if somebody was to buy the box online or something? We, we're not prepared for that. I don't know no. how many we would have, Yeah. so, we'll so I don't think we're set up to do that. Okay, here's uh, a special request from... Mr. Jonathan. Did you uh, did you zest that bad, Larry? All right, I gotta, I gotta so, try this. So he made an espresso with a lemon zest rind with oh, graham yeah. crackers. It's delicious. I like a little lemon in my uh, espresso. Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. This is it. How do you have graham crackers? How would that be possible? <laughs> oh, from the strawberry cheesecake uh, drink. It's amazing. Yeah. Right, I'm a little jealous. Me yeah, and, we, me and two me and fat Dave guys on both me sides. Kind of sad. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. You guys had the opportunity to yell it out just like I did. All right. And I'd share, but I already licked it all. Just a heads up if there's food involved. We're interested. <laughs> just a heads up. <laughs> So uh, lots of congratulations last week. Thank you, everybody who wrote in uh, for our uh, eight-year anniversary. Nine years running. You can change your, your things. Nine years. We're in the ninth year of the Cigar Authority. Hard to believe. We're gonna well, keep it still doing qualifies. It. We're still over eight years. We are. <laughs> you know, it's always over. But 417 episodes. So we got to get to 500. That's, I, the, that's the goal. I, I don't know how it is. Like, for so long, people call in, like, order cigars on the phone and... I answer it 90% of the time. And they're like, oh, I'm a long-time listener. I love the show. I spend two hours every Saturday with you guys. First thing out of my mouth is, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> I, I feel bad. My condolences. <laughs> what can we do to help you or <laughs> improve? There is a 12-step program out there. <laughs> you can just listen to the Friends in Recovery podcast. They'll get you through it. This week at the register, a customer says, I know that voice. You're the guy from the really. Yeah. That was really? Uh, that was Ernest. <clears throat> <Yeah. clears throat> really. Yep. So, uh, Aladino, let's take this one out of the picture because you can't have it. Right. Natural or Maduro? Is it natural? It's Corojo or Maduro? Okay. Aladino, uh, Corojo or Maduro? And I, I'm nervous because who's still staring at me? Like, uh, pick the right they're, one. They're both. But it's like I picking know one both, of the kids, yeah, right? Yeah, they're both as babies. Uh, I am a fan of the Corojo. And I like all the sizes, but I've been buying boxes of that Corona size. That's because Ed Sullivan turned you on to it. Because the answer <laughs> is Robusto is the one. I guess. I do like the Robusto. I buy singles of the Robusto. But I'm a Corona guy now. I've been converted. Wow. You didn't get into Lanceros yet. You know, you no, no, no. No, no, no. I don't think I'll do Lanceros. No. Yeah. The correct answer to your question, Dave, yeah. not to say that uh, Mr. Jonathan is incorrect, is both. Both? Both. Uh, you know, it's going to depend on what I'm in the mood for, but you know I love Corojo. Yeah. And there's nothing else quite like the Aladino Corojo on the market. You get the full blast of the Corojo taste. And, you know, as you know, I used to smoke the Cuban ones way back when, when yeah. they used the real Corojo right. wrapper. <laughs> so you know it well. I know it well, and it's just a familiar flavor that I enjoy quite a bit. But on the other hand, I love San Andreas wrapped cigars as well. So especially that small one of which I've already, of which I've already smoked a couple. Um, so if, if they're going to cheat on the brand, you might as well cheat within the brand or something. You could smoke one. Now, you know. with FDA, you can change packaging, correct? Not the box count, but the packages. So a split 20-count box opens on both sides, split box top, two rows of five on each side. You have... Well, he just received some boxes. That's have, how they came in. He was you saying... You have 10 uh, Corojo and 10 Maduro mm. in a split box. Yeah, now... So you have one for the early in the day and one to end the day. So which one would you say is the... Fuller bodied one that you'd want to end the day with, or is uh, it for me, it's the the Maduro. It's full of body. It's full of body. There's a little bit more of a. I don't want to use the word bite because I just 
sometimes that's not taken the right yeah. way, but there's a little bit more of a oomph to it. And one's round and one's box, box press. Unless you go with the Lancero. Then the Lancero, Lancero's round. Right. Right. So, And between yesterday and today, I've smoked 12 Maduros. <laughs> so... You have a consumption problem. I'm hooked right now. <laughs> yeah. Gee, you think? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I smoked just about all Maduros, although this one, and I had, a, had the uh, Corojo one earlier today, too. But the, the, the Corojo one is very, very special to me. It's an old flavor that brings me back to when cigars, when that first came out. Oh, my God. It very was different. Like, <clears throat> and many people have tried to emulate that. Nobody ever even came close. Mm -hmm. it's, in a, it's in a league by itself, where I don't think the Maduro is in a league by itself. There's some great Maduros that are similar using that. Um, San Andreas, nobody's using that. Very special. I, I agree with that. Yeah. And from an industry <clears throat> standpoint, the Aladino Corojo stands on its own. Yeah, nobody's close. Yeah. Could they possibly get a shade-grown version of the Corojo? A sh a see, a... A Corojo seed made into a shade grown. Dun, dun, dun. The characteristic yeah. Basically, he just said, I'm an idiot. Yeah, yeah right. Mm -hmm. It's good. <laughs> so his answer was the Being characteristic nice, of a Corojo. We'll fill in the spaces. Yeah, I, I got you. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm reading between the lines, Husto. We'll do the color commentating <laughs> over here. No, 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 no. <laughs> the answer is no, you can't do that. You need sun grown to make the characteristic of that flavor to be able to get it done fine <laughs> you know it, it seems the old school um growers and stuff they they poo poo the shade you know it's too mild it's there's not enough there and stuff but he can do it he can pull it off i'd like it yeah i'd like to it, taste it right <laughs> i just want to have it a, a sample. <clears throat> i can't have it i want it i can't have it so uh, the following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. And what got me about this is that the um, tagline, La Galera and the cigar that made Dave sick. And this is Josh writing. It wasn't a La Galera. It says La Galera uh -huh. and the cigar that made Dave sick. All right. Uh, Josh writes, hey, guys, I've been a listener since the summer of 2016. So when I recently heard you all discuss your most listened to episodes, I went back and listened to a few that predated me. Naturally, I started with Dave rating the cigar mags. I kept on listening from there. A oh couple God, of things. Got me in big trouble. First, yep. it was hilarious to hear you all, especially Dave, try to pronounce La Galera when he first brought them in, <laughs> since it would eventually become the cigar of the year and an advertiser. Second, Dave told a story about a cigar he had to put down and go puke, among other things. Uh, I, I'm one of those leather-tongued individuals you guys talk about and love full-bodied, High nicotine cigars. I need to know what that cigar was. Hey. Hmm. I sent it to him already. So. All right, so he's got the answer. <laughs> I'm not announcing it. O only because, and let me tell you, I, I was caught. You know, I didn't say anything to anybody. I ran in the back room, threw up twice, <laughs> came back out, and relit the cigar, and didn't say anything to anybody, but... White as your T-shirt. Right, but everybody knew what the hell's the matter with you or something. My eyes were bloodshot. It was brutal. Um, and it was from lack of having anything to eat that day, early that day. I went for a big, giant cigar that was very full-bodied. It did not turn off the people that were in that store during that snowstorm. Because it was our number one selling. It. Yeah, it was our number one everybody selling cigar that day. Everybody bought it, but I'm afraid it's going to end up hurting somebody. I don't want to hurt anybody because of it. Because there's nothing negative to it. But I will say, they're in the same country, right? They were both Dominican cigars, and you say, "Oh, Dominican cigars aren't full-bodied," and, and this was very full-bodied. Some of them can be, and and they they can be. And let's say it to you. Uh, you told them anyway, but if you ever want to know when you see me, I'll, I'll give it to you there, but I'm not going to hurt them. Try, you know, uh, I don't want to hurt them in any way, uh, so I won't say it out loud. So, go ahead. All right, another message submitted through the Contact Us page, and uh, Levi writes, I just visited my local brick-and-mortar shop. Is and he named after the jeans? Levi? <laughs> just wondering. It's an odd name, isn't it? Did you take the bet and decide that you're going to just say everything that comes into your yeah, mind? I thought that's how I had it. 
I get 500 bucks, right? Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Dave digresses. Okay. Uh, just visited, visited my local brick and mortar shop, uh, the only one in the area in, here in Indiana, and noticed that their humidification was off and only at 50% by the analog readers they have displayed. Wow. I didn't know how to be uh, debonair about it, so I didn't want to say anything and come off as an ass or know-it-all. That being said, I did buy five cigars from the shop because I feel like I have to support it nice. being the only one in the area. I took the cigars and put them directly in my humidor at home. Please let me know how to be debonair about it and if it's okay, if it's an okay percentage because I've only been smoking for about two years and don't know it all. But I love listening to your show and listen to it all day at work for 10 hours, Monday to Friday, and five hours every Saturday. You're going to run out of shows, man. There's only 417 of them. Yeah. Uh, I was into the new shows and the old ones learning every time I listen. Thanks ahead of time for answering all of my questions. Signed, Mr. Rogers. Yeah, I would say in a cigar shop where you're grabbing a cigar and you're ready to light up and go, it's too low. Well, But that, for long term, it wouldn't be. And what I'll say is the if the shop is using an analog uh, well, why would they display it? You're asking for trouble. To Lots of people it. do the wrong thing. Yeah. So it's analog. So it can be off as much as 20 points anyways. So really the thing to look at is, are they using a digital or a, an electronic um, hygrometer that is delivering the signal to their humi humidifier to say, okay, you know, I want to keep this at 70% and maybe the analog reader is off. Because, again, it can be off by as much as 20 points. We just recommend anybody, humidors come with them, cheap humidors. You just get a digital one, and then you don't have to worry about yeah. it. Yeah. So and that could be the answer. I think the other point, too, is that we probably aren't as obsessed with looking at hygrometers anymore. You can tell by the feel. Well, and that, that's my next point is you, you, you can tell right at the – before foot. you even bring it to the register. You just give the foot a little squeeze. and it Not should that have, cap. Not where you put right. because you're going to break it. Yeah, you just, just at the foot, squeeze. you give it a little squeeze, and it should have a little sponginess, and it should bounce, bounce back. right back. And I, I think it's perfectly reasonable at that point to mention that the cigars feel a little dry. I, right. I certainly wouldn't be offended or think someone's a know-it-all. I might not agree with them, but you know, exactly. I think it's perfectly reasonable to mention. There's um, The Leaf by Oscar is notorious, that outer wrapper. Yeah, because it's out there dried out. The outer wrapper dries out even if it's in 70%. It just gets a little brittle because it, there's nothing protecting it, so it flakes off, but you can still give the cigar a little squeeze at the foot, and you can say, okay, the inside is fine. In order to keep that outer wrapper hydrated, you almost have to run your humidity too high. So, Yeah, yeah what's the magic there? Tough. Tough. What else you got? Well, it only had two listed, but I got one here. <laughs> get your letters into us because we get we're getting down to the bottom here, huh? Mm. They were so stacked up at one well, point. Well, we did that whole show where we yeah. went through thirty of them. So go to the cigarauthority dot com and contact us. And if you got any questions, we're really going to answer them because we've cut it down dramatically. Uh, the following message was submitted through the contact us page, and Taylor writes, "Dear Mr. J, I'm quite looking forward to your upcoming flavor versus nicotine segment." Far too often, cigar people confuse full flavor with nicotine. You cannot ta taste or smell pure nicotine. Roll your own cigarettes, as an example, are full of nicotine with minimal flavor and zero body. Flu-cured Latakia pipe tobacco is loaded with flavor and body, while the nicotine is quite low. Another analogy is dark roast coffee beans. Folks assume they are caffeine bombs, when in fact, the lighter cinnamon roasts can be quite buzzing. Thank you for setting the Absolutely record straight. True. Hopefully. Absolutely true when it comes to the coffee. Absolutely true when it comes to the cigarettes. Cigars. Because they add the nicotine, right? Yep. But when it comes to the size of the cigar. You're so friggin' wrong. <laughs> it, may be, it may be different. I'm just saying. Hey. But we'll find out. We're going to get the answer. Dave, I wanted to just mention... Uh, a conversation we were having this week about the movie Chappaquiddick in the ad that I heard on the radio. Yeah. Where they said uh, Chappaquiddick is rated PG-13 for thematic material, disturbing images, some strong language, and historical smoking. True. Imagine <laughs> that. So it's rated PG because somebody in the movie is smoking. PG-13. Yeah. You have to be 13 to be able to buy a ticket to go right. into that movie. Because, God yeah. forbid, there's actually somebody smoking during the movie. And, you know, I sort of wondered, does Disney need to go back and revisit the ratings, right? Uh, what about Cruella DeVille? Yeah. Yeah. 
And that bitch was smoking through that whole thing. Bugs Bunny was a chain smoker. The the other Baby one, Fred Finster. Flintstow, Baby Finster. That's. I don't know if you remember Captain Hook from Peter Pan. He had a cigar holder that allowed him to smoke two cigars at a time. Popeye was a big pipe smoker, wasn't he? Yeah. Yep. And he's looked at uh, for helping kids eat green vegetables. There Not you. Not me. But, but other regular kids. Pe- regular people. Eat spinach. Yeah. So I guess smoking's equated to sex and violence now. It's crazy. David and I equated to uh, Brutus instead right. of Popeye. <laughs> there we go. All right. We got time to squeeze in the classic three-way brought to you by Classic Cigars. You've heard of epic rap battles. But now it's time for the epic battle. Wow. It's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day. Tell anyone about this, I'll f***ing kill you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. In classic history. Here's looking at you, kid. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Nervous? Yes. All classic cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic, and every cigar is priced under, get this, under $3 per cigar. You like that, baby? Let him know where I came from, yeah! Choose any blend, including the Classic Connecticut for its mild and smooth taste, the classic Maduro for its bold and spicy flavor, or the classic Cuban for its sweet, sun-grown, and nutty overtones. That's undertones, you idiot! Whichever classic you choose, it's a classic cigar. Available at TwoGuysCigars.com. That's TwoGuysCigars.com. Celebrate today with a classic cigar. So, Dave, before you begin, I have to ask, are you staying true to the date of April 7th? Yes, I am. I have to disqualify myself. So a person in the chat room by the name of Q Marks, who's been taking shots at Jonathan the whole show, gave me 14 born on this day <laughs> on my screen. <laughs> you ain't gonna, I have to disqualify you, myself. All right. Don't be such a wuss. You're not going to get one of them. If you stop looking at them, you think you'll remember them? Uh, Jackie Chan. Don't look. Uh, okay. Don't Jackie look. Chan, Francis Ford Coppola, Henry Ford. Wow. Out, P.T. Barnum. I, I say we do it anyway. Don't look at the screen. Don't look at the screen. Come see the screen up and see where we go. We're going to make him go last each time because we don't want to want to ruin it on there. Yep. So, Ed Sullivan, you go first. Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> Choreographer, stuntman, notable films including Rush Hour Trilogy, Enter the Dragon, Shanghai News, Karate Kid, grew popular with his uh, mixed comedies and stunts. Um, which he preferred to do himself. He worked as a director and producer, a martial artist, um, and a singer. Jackie Chan, born today, what year? 1955. 55. 44. 44. What do you say, Barry Stein? 54. The two points. <laughs> <laughs> so the point is going to go to 44, which was Mr. Jonathan? Yeah. All right. We're going to go with Mr. Jonathan, Russell Crowe. Was he on there? He was on there, but I didn't memorize that one. <laughs> All right. Oscar winner, actor who won four film awards, best actor and playing. Uh, and whoever that was, why don't they just send me next week so I can uh, don't have to do the work for him. Uh, Gladiator, uh, La Miserable, Cinderella Man, American Gangster, Master and Commander, Russell Crowe, the movie actor. Born today, what year? 1959. 59, Ed Sullivan. 1965. 65. 61. It is 64, so it's going to 59, which is Mr. Jonathan, two points. Damn it, I'm off by one on those, but one over. Billy Holiday? That was on there. It was on there. Billy Holiday, jazz singer, American jazz singer, a songwriter who sang Strange Fruit, Easy Living, and Lady Sings the Blues. She received numerous awards, including being inducted into the Grammy Award Hall of Fame. Billy Holiday, what year? Ed Sullivan. 1925. 25. 1919. 19. 1912. 1912 would be the point. It's 1915. You even cheat and you're not even correct. Um, <laughs> but so, I'm ballparking because the numbers yep. are there. So um, everybody is over on that. Uh, no points over to uh, Ed Sullivan. James Garner. Uh, actor best known for his television shows The Maverick and The Rockford File. Garner also uh, is in more than 50 films, Academy Award winner in The Notebook. Uh, also, uh, the movie that made Steve Saka cry, if you remember that. <laughs> James Garner. 1928. 28. 41. 41. 44. 28, two points, Ed Sullivan. Wow. Way to come back. 
Hey. Two to two. Uh, I'm all about the Rockford Files. There we go. Uh, over, to you, over you to Mr. Jonathan. Two questions left. Francis Ford Coppola, which I know you mentioned. Uh, influential film producer, responsible for films like The Godfather Trilogy, Apocalypse Now. Big cigar smoker, Francis Ford Coppola. Born today, what year? 1920. 20. Ed? 1933. 33? 39. 39 would be two points, but 33 will take it for Ed Sullivan. Massive comeback, three to two. It's not and massive. He got two right. That's not a massive comeback. Massive. Massive comeback. One question left, unless we go to a tiebreaker, and you can partake, you can be in this because I don't think he did died on this day. Uh, Ford. Uh, it was two that he did die this day. <laughs> Henry Ford. <Yep. laughs> Henry Ford, American industrialist and automaker of the Model T Ford, died at 83 on this day. What year? Ed Sullivan. 1940. Mr. John. 1974. 1974. Ed Sullivan will take it. It's, 19, it's 1951. It's 1947. Okay. But Ed Sullivan will take it. Four to two. And uh, that's it. He nice ruined move. it on us. He ruined it. Uh, that's called the dink move. Yep. Chat room was all over him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, chat room. Uh, the internet symbol, uh, uh, symbolic birth date was actually uh, today. What year? The internet. The internet would be 1971 would be my guess. Ed Sullivan, what do you think? He's in the right ballpark. I think 73. I would have gone 71. 69. You guys were all close, though. Mm -hmm. WrestleMania 2, three locations. Hulk Hogan beat King Kong Bundy. WrestleMania 2 would be 1983. 84. 85. 86. Damn it. Ed Sullivan is our champion, and uh, whoever that was that gave you the information is the loser. (laughs) 100% 100% true. Way to ruin it. Way to ruin the game. Uh, but anyway, he, he meant well. Because I'm... I'm what, the, what the hell is he ripping on me for? You, you know, I think it was the poop on your face. <laughs> Just because he's jealous that I would do it and he's too chicken. 500 bucks. It's 500 bucks. Um, so, speaking of $500, cigar was smoking. Priceless. Priceless, Priceless cigar. The Churchill. Known as the Aladino Churchill, all by itself. It needs a it needs a sexy name other than Churchill. The unreleased Churchill. This could be the Aladino. This is the Aladino. Hmm. There's Aladino, and then there's the Aladino. Yeah, but when you alphabetize it, it's Aladino, comma the, so it's still going to be listed as Aladino. Hmm. I, I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't even try. I have no idea how or why your brain works. <laughs> so you as a cigar geek, this is interesting to you. You want this cigar because. And I would smoke it and not save it. And then when we do a thing in two years about cigars we wish we had saved, I got you'll have two left. I and I have thought. <laughs> That's right. I have two. Those are earmarked for uh, smoking with Husto 10 years from so now. So we're remodeling the store here downstairs. And we have worked through the lounge and through the retail part of the store, and now we begin the humidor part of it. And um, new cases are being brought in, and the old wooden things that, that were there now have to be moved and taken out. So they've taken one of them out. And as they remove the shelf, and this is in the humidor, underneath were boxes of cigars that fell underneath there, and we got some gold here. One of them is the Camacho Select. And this has got to be at least 10, 12 years old, this box of cigars. No kidding. And I believe, and we're going to find out after the show, the Camacho Select was Cameroon. He's shaking his head, yeah. We can actually smoke a Camacho Cameroon from 12 years ago, match it up, and see what this is going to become. Although the blend may be different or whatever, but it's... Well, you just, you just have exactly to go for same. trouble. Why? You just have to go for trouble. What's trouble? I bet it's going to be the same because then it becomes predicate. Ah, this would have to be the Aladino Select. <laughs> this would have to be the Aladino well, Select. Well, you can put in for a name change. See, he's shaking his finger. You're just going for trouble. 
You just causing trouble. You can't help yourself. Why is it trouble? I don't understand the trouble here. Plus, I have to say what's on my mind, right? Yeah, no, you don't. <laughs> That's the new thing. Isn't no, you it? don't. No? I will say that the, uh, the new floor that we have downstairs has officially been broken in. I saw that. Because I did a little break dancing on it just to see if I could at 40, and I can. I got to admit, but I was, let's I, talk about the next day. I was a little hoping sore. He, yeah. yeah. I, I was hoping he broke a dislocated a hip because yeah. he's getting at that age where, you know, right. things don't move the way they used to. Everything moved. It just didn't like it the next day or the day after. I'm still you're gonna a little pay, sore. You're going to pay for that when you get old as me. Things that I did years ago now hurt mm -hmm. me today. I just learned my lesson. I'll warm up a little bit next time. You know, do some jumping jacks, get the blood flowing, get the heart rate going, and then do it. But that's on his social media page of Mr. Jonathan, Mr. Right? Jonathan, yeah. And it was impressive. Thank you. And I had to use my hands. Back in the day when I was in shape, I could go no-handed and really just get them torqued. I want you to know it inspired me. I went home and I watched Beach Street. Nice. <laughs> and nice. you used to be able to spit on your head. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm bald. <laughs> I, I, uh, when I learned how to spit on my head. Yeah. It was on a roller skating rink floor, and they had done the plastic on the floor. And because we would hockey stop, we had chipped the floor, the paint on the floor. So I'm spinning on my head, and I got up myself. With roller up. skates on? Of course. You okay. had to have roller skates on. You were roller skating. Yeah. So I spun into the crack and just shaved my hairline right at the point of my head. See how it's pointy up there? Scalped. I scalped myself. And the hair never grew back there. And it was my roommate and my barber at the same time making fun of me that I was going bald. And I'm like, no, it's, it's still bleeding. I'm not going bald. It, I it ripped my hair out. And I just said, you know what? Screw you. I'm never going back to you again. And I started shaving my head right then. Your roommate was your barber? Yes. Really? Yeah. He was fired. barber for a roommate. Fired immediately, making fun making of his fun customer. Of yeah. Charge me full price, too. I didn't even get a discount. All right. Fired. All right. We're out of time. That's it. Next week, collaborations between a, uh, not a collaboration, it's, it's brand owners and manufacturers, right? right. Um, we'll talk about that. Cigar makers versus great cigar marketers. And we're going to try to see who the best are. Are they the manufacturer? Are they the, the grower and the blender? Or is it really the marketer? We'll find that. Until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And when you do the right thing and buy a box of Aladino and you get the Aladino, always remember, keep the lid end out of your mouth. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.